What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be working on one of the most requested topics that I see commented on a bunch of videos. I see this word pop up a lot and I'm gonna help you guys with tackling how to become a more consistent player. So let's get right into it. And before we get started guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. The channel is growing every day. I'm super excited to be able to help more and more people. And the higher our number gets, the more we get to work on these collaboration videos. We have our first one scheduled in August. I'm super excited about that. The next number that we have to hit in order to work with another channel that we're trying to work with is 25K. So hopefully we can get there soon. Now, back onto the topic of consistency. I don't like using the word consistency when I'm teaching because most people use it as a placeholder for something else. Most people, when they say a player is super consistent, they mean that the person kept the ball in the court. And I don't like to use that word to describe somebody, meaning I don't like to say the word consistent. That word to me is just like being successful. It's very basic level. You're keeping the ball in the court. For me, consistent or being consistent is being able to do the same thing over and over again. And everything I'm going to do today is going to be to help you figure out how to do that with being consistent. This drill, before I even get into it, is not meant to teach you how to hit a shot. It's meant to teach you how to get a consistent result. This drill can be applied to any shot that you use, serves, returns, volleys, transition shots, slices, lobs, doesn't matter. Once you understand how the framework of the test works, then you will understand how to apply it to actually build consistent results. So let's get into the 10 test, which is the name of this drill. So the way the 10 test works is super simple. You can do it with a partner rallying. You can do it off of a ball machine, or you can do it with somebody feeding you the ball. The 10 test is you have a box about that size located anywhere on the court based on the skill that you want to practice. So if you want to work on hitting the ball deep, or hitting a ball heavy and short, doesn't matter. You take a box that's about this size and you put it wherever you need. That is my target for all 10 shots. Now, I know in your head you're thinking, oh, well, that's easy. I could have figured that out on my own. Not quite when you actually figure out the other part that goes into this. That's my target, but that's not my only target. You're gonna be scoring yourself based on three criteria, and each criteria is equally important. So hitting this box, is my precision score. I get 10 tries to try to hit in this box. And if I can hit it here, that goes towards my precision score. If I can hit it into the fourth of the court, meaning since this is a deuce side, past the service line on the deuce side here, this will go into my accuracy score. And like I said in the intro, if I don't miss the ball and I can get it into the court, that will go into my success score. So your goal is to score as precise as you can, as often as possible. But the funny thing is, if you're precise, then you're accurate. And if you're accurate, then you're obviously successful. That's where the beauty of the 10 test comes in. Whatever technique you're trying to work on, let's say you want to work on keeping your contact out in front, you have 10 shots to keep your contact in front and still get the outcome that you're trying to get. That's how you build real consistency. You're telling yourself, to do something with your body. And then as a result of doing something with your body, you're creating that result on the other side of the court. So I'm gonna run the 10 test with just a normal forehand cross court, and then I'll show you how to score it all together. So switching it to this angle here, as I said, I just get 10 shots. And don't forget, you have to pick a technical thing that you're trying to maintain. I'm actually working on a couple things with my forehand, so I'm gonna try and do those. For me, I've been working on trying to flatten out my forehand more. I'm naturally a person who likes to roll the ball more. So I have my box in the back of the court, which means I would have to lengthen out my stroke or hit through and hit harder. So for now, as I'm going through my little 10 test, my goal is hit the box while maintaining, okay, while maintaining hitting a flatter shot. So I set my hands here, and what I'm trying not to do is my natural tendency, which is that. So it's number one, I go through. That's one in the box. Number two, I go through. That's two in the box. Number three, that's in as well. Wow, I am killing it today. Four, overshot the box. 
five in the box, six, a little short, seven, that's out, eight, that's too short, nine, that's long, and 10, that's back inside the space. So, based on my recollection, I had two balls that I hit long, I had one ball that landed short, and I hit four into the box. So here's how I would count that score. Start with success. I was successful eight times, meaning I kept the ball inside the court. Out of those eight, my accuracy was a seven because I hit two long and I hit one short. So it wasn't in that fourth of the court. So I put eight in, I was accurate for seven and I was precise for four. If that makes sense, you would then record that score and run it again. And all you would do is say, hmm, maybe if I do this with my technique, I'll be able to hit that box a little more often. Maybe if I do this with my legs, I'll do this a little more often. Then you build in consistency because you're testing it over and over again. So what I would do would be then to run the 10 test again after, let's say, saying, let me set my hand here instead of here, or let me step in instead of waiting back here. And then you're building in the expectation of every time I do this with my body, I get this result on the other side of the court. Now, I know this drill might not have been as fancy as some people were expecting, but this is the one drill that I run every three to four weeks that I can directly attribute to a lot of success with my students, building confidence in their consistency and also building confidence in their willingness to hold to certain techniques. Because most times when you're learning something, a coach can tell you, hey, we're going to change this on your forehand or we're going to change this on your serve. And the first thing that you do is you get a little hesitant because you know that your results are going to go down. But if you're able to continually track what's going on, you can see improvement over time. But for me, the reason why this drill is so important is that box can be put anywhere for any skill. That box can be moved short, deep, left, right. That box could even be off the court depending on what type of skill you're working on. For example, if I wanted to hit a slice serve, I might say, my ball has to land in the service box, but I need my bounce to be way over on the other side of the court. And by tracking those things over time, you're able to make technical adjustments that you trust because Every time you make this adjustment, you see this result on the court and you can consistently use it because you've tested it and you know what it's going to do. Most people, they just kind of wing it and say, I need to hit the ball a little harder. I need to hit the ball a little deeper. I need more spin, but they're not really testing it out over and over again. And then they don't really trust it when they need it. I've seen tons of times where people will be hitting a shot and as soon as it's under pressure, that whole technique changes because it's not something that they've tested over and over again. That's gonna wrap up this video though. As I said, I want you guys to go out and use this drill over and over again. You don't have to do it 20 times in a day, just do it two or three times and then go practice something technical. Hit through the ball, lift up, use your legs, whatever it is, use that technical skill and then test it out a couple of weeks later. See if that's actually getting the result that you want. Put that box on the court somewhere that you would expect the result to be and then see if you can build in the technique to get that result. But that's gonna wrap it up. Hope this video was helpful and until then I'll see you guys in the next one.